Tonight, we have an endless barrage of hardcore, some power pop, and some old school legends here in St. John's. This is Barely There TV, covering Tibbs Eve 2023. You're watching Barely There TV. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, tell us about some of the bands that played this year. This year was cool. We actually had seven bands this year. Uh, it was cool. Uh, we had Doberman, which was a, just a, a sick hardcore band uh, yeah. of some of some of our younger punks in the scene. I want to say shout out Doberman. Shout out Doberman. We didn't that get you guys rocked. Last time, but we did get you this time. Everyone was hyping up the set, so really glad to have Big you guys time. this time. What is your favorite band so far tonight? Well, my favorite that I saw so far was Doberman. Fuck, man, Doberman was pretty sick, I gotta say. I'm a big Doberman fella myself. Bobby is so far Doberman. So far Doberman. <laughs> Uh, joined here right now with Colin Moore. Uh, this guy's known for running a few events around town, especially around Christmas time. We get the uh, Tibbs Eve show. And uh, last year, a few weeks ago now, 2023 was a smash sensation hit, to put it lightly, I'd say. Uh, tell me a little bit about how the night went, I guess, just short, little. Yeah, sure. First of all, thanks for having me here in my room. I'm barely there, TV. Um, yeah, a few weeks ago we had our annual Tibbs Eve show and the night was electric. We had seven bands, um, we all played fantastic sets and we raised, what we something we do every year was um, a fundraiser for Bridges to Hope, which we've been doing the past mm, five or six years at least. And we raised 1500 bucks, which was uh, the yeah. greatest amount. And what Bridges to Hope is, it's a, um, it's a local food security uh, a community outreach group. Yeah. Um, that's actually just next door to the Peter Eason Pub, so it feels good to uh, support an organization just within that neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah, it's always good to have conditioner back. Of yeah. course, just want to throw that in there right now. Yeah, absolutely.
And uh, I'm going to ask you now about a bit of the history, maybe, and then I'll, we'll yeah. get into the night itself a little more. So yeah, tell us about the history of the Tibbs Eve show, how you came to run it, and like what it's like been uh, growing up around that a little bit. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Good question. Um, so yeah, I, I didn't come up with this or anything like that, but it has been going on as a tradition around for probably around the past over 10 years or so. Um, it used to be friends of mine, like... Anna and Jono, who used to put off the show for a few years, and they moved to London, and then... Ontario? Uh, no, no, uh, even better. Um, London, England. So, um, so you know, that was cool, and uh, myself and my friend Johnny would run it when, uh, when he was home from Nunavut, and so we did it for a number of years. And then, um, yeah, so, but yeah, when, uh, when Anna and Jono left, uh, someone had to do it, and I just started booking it, and... We can, and they were actually the first people that kind of came up with, like, hey, let's do this as a fundraiser for Bridget Hope. And so I've been doing it the past, geez, I don't know, six, seven years, something yeah. like that. Um, and yeah, it's just uh, something to do. But, and something I've done, like, since I've gotten it, is that what I like to do is have as many bands as possible play. And I try to start it as early as possible uh, in the night, usually around nine o'clock start time. And I feel like years ago, it's not so bad now. But years ago, it used to be like pulling teeth trying to get a show to start early. Everything was on punk time. Punk time was about like 11.30 or so. And everyone was just kind of not getting out until almost 3 o'clock by the time the last band was uh, played and everything like that. So I thought it was really cool to try and get as many bands as I could and get them to start early and tell them they had to reduce set time. I only want, you know, 10, 15-minute sets. Everyone's playing a condensed set. And pretty much almost with the threat of like, all right, you go over 50 minutes, I'm pulling the plug. Yeah, yeah. But I did that, and everyone would keep all the same drum breakables, trying to use all the same equipment, use the same pedals and tuners if you can, just anything to keep constant electricity because I feel like it's a lot more fun in the night to just have constant momentum and not these big lulls in between. Yeah. And you got all this action going on, and all of a sudden it's like three hours later and like 10 bands have played. And you're just like, what happened? Yeah, totally. It's a, it's, a, it's a whirlwind, and I always thought it was really fun. And then maybe it's 1 o'clock, and people who want to go out and enjoy festivities, drink a bit of slush, yeah. or go and enjoy in the late slush, night, they have, they have plenty of time to do so, and, and so do the people that are playing. Yeah, that's, uh, that's awesome. And we see it on the posters, too. I mean, 9 o'clock on the button. That's a bit of, like, uh, a, bit of a, a mantra for you, I'd say. You know, we see that every year. And thanks again for, you know, taking it up, man. It's always... Uh, been a great show since I've been there. So we had Sick Puppy, which is a three-piece, um, sort of like hardcore uh, rock band. Um, you know, big fan favorites. <laughs> What does Tibbs Eve mean to you personally? You know, you got this sense of community on the go, but is there any like standout memory or anything that really comes to mind when you think of Tibbs Eve and you want to recapture? Sure. I mean, I suppose as an organizer, there's always like a little bit of like level of, of stress naturally when you're organizing in anything. It's like, oh God, but it always comes together. So it's one of those things where it's like, I'm happy once it's kind of all there. But, um, 
yeah, I always have like really fun memories, but you know, a lot of the best memories I have are obviously during the show, but also just like after the show when I'm hanging out because it's yeah. it's a big opportunity. Because traditionally here, like Tib Z was the night that was kind of all about seeing your friends um, because everyone does family stuff on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day, you know, should you celebrate it. Um, but you know, so Tib Z was the big night where everyone kind of gets to see each other, especially people who have only just gotten home. So it's a one big kind of a hurrah. So it's always really exciting to see people that maybe you haven't seen since last year or since the summer or something like that. And it's all, you know, it's, you know, it's, uh, those are kind of my favorite memories yeah. is seeing those sorts of people. Honestly, every year there's more and more people, like, definitely over capacity. Oh, yeah. But it's, like, absolutely wall-to-wall -wall of people. And it's fun. People are hanging out. They're having a game of VLTs with each other. People are, you know, having a, wow. sharing, sharing a beverage. Um, all sorts of things, and yeah, everyone kind of gets to catch up with each other. I'm kind of like I'm usually running around a little yeah, bit, but I get to see everyone else do that, and that makes me happy. Um, yeah, so that was awesome, and I guess the other one that plays pretty much every year for the past, geez, I don't know, seven or eight years is uh, Secret Band, and Secret Band started out as something that myself and Johnny Lush, uh, Walt, Matthew Earl, and uh, our friend Dan McCarthy, we kind of just started together, and we decided to come up with this idea where what we would do was ask some of our friends in the scene um, if they wanted to sing a cover of their choice. And usually be kind of kept to like hardcore punk, like 1980s hardcore punk. And generally speaking, we try and ask people that didn't play in bands, yeah. who, do, who we weren't used to being up on the stage. Yeah, and especially at that time, like a lot of like, you know, women or queer people, you know, people that, you know, didn't grow up with a guitar in their hand yeah. from the age of nine, ten, or, or, you know, just like didn't have that kind of exposure. So I always thought it was cool to ask those people to give them opportunity to get up and have a bit of fun on the stage. So, yeah, and it'll work like karaoke. So. That was, um, that's kind of how it started. And it was only gonna be a one-off thing, but we've just found it be kind of fun. So we would just do it once a year, and we do it on Tibbs Eve. And every year it's gotten like bigger and bigger, and I'll ask more and more people. Yeah. And the lineup of Secret Band changes a bit. Like myself and Walt are kind of the big constants. This year was the first year we didn't have Johnny on bass. Yeah. Um, yeah. But for the most part, we get together every year and we'll pretty much in like three or four jams, try and learn anywhere from like 15 to 20 songs. Yeah, we had 20, we had 23, I oh think this God. year. Wow. Um, so it was a lot, but I always find that to be a lot of fun. And I think it's, it's fun kind of just pulling people up. Cause also that's another part of just the entertainment is bringing people in from the crowd. It's not just, oh, spectating uh, whoever's up there or whatever. So I, I think it's a bit of fun and everyone kind of gets to 
get a little bit of that enjoyment with each other. So I, I love doing Secret Band for that reason. I'm not like a cover band guy, yeah. but I think Secret Band's like Secret a little band. different, you know what it's, I mean? It's, uh, I'd say, if you don't mind, I can take that there. Sure, yeah. Uh, it's kind of like, Tibbs Eve has this great sense of community, not only within Newfoundland, but also like within the punk scene. Yeah, where and everyone's home too, right? Yeah, absolutely. A lot of people, you know, get the holiday, so they're home from Toronto or Montreal or wherever, yeah. wherever they come from. And this sort of tradition, like, almost brings that to another level of getting this whole community in on this one band pretty well, the secret band. Totally. So I think it's awesome that you guys, uh, that you guys do that. Secret band rocks. Secret band rocks. <laughs> I think that's pretty well all the questions we have. Uh, so thank you again, Colin Moore. No problem. Come back anytime. Do you have anything to say to the audience? One last, uh, one last little line you got for them? I'm sure. Um, yeah. No. Well, thanks so much for coming out, Tibbs. But also thanks so much for um, supporting punk scene in general. Um, we all love putting off shows and love to see you there. Um, got one coming up. Well, I don't know when this is going to come out, but we got one coming up February 16th. It's going to be pretty cool. February 16th. But it's gonna be more of a more of a rock and roll, but with 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 some punk elements. A little bit of rocking. Thanks, Colin. Back to you, barely there. <laughs> <laughs>